Back here in the Music City, we are all set for the second half of our quarterfinals matchups. It's the old school versus the new school. South Carolina, they've won three straight, and no one's won more tournament titles than the Lady of Alls. Who will get the matchup and the opportunity to move on to the semis? We've got tip-off coming right about now. Nashville, Tennessee. The Music City. But really, this place is all about opportunity. No telling when your big break's gonna happen or when your perfect opportunity comes. But there is one thing for sure. It won't be today if you don't play. Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee. Where well, the music is happening on Broadway, not too far away. We're in Bridgestone Arena as you are watching Champ Week on the SEC Network, and we are in the quarterfinals, and for the third time this season, Tennessee is taking on the defending national champion, South Carolina Gamecocks. Tennessee has won both games in the regular season. So two games already in the books. Two semifinalists are set. Mississippi State and Texas A&M will be our first game tomorrow evening after A&M pulled off the mild upset over LSU. After this game, we will have Georgia and Missouri. The last night, boy, Tennessee almost didn't even get to this game because last night they were tied late against Auburn. Ramaya Davis, bank time. The freshman put it in with half a second left, and the Lady Balls, Lady Balls survived, and they've advanced now as Holly Warlick's team gets ready to take on South Carolina. For the third time, Jamie Nard had to leave that game with a hip injury, and when Nard saw the winning shot, she was thrilled, and good news for all you Lady Ball fans, Jamie Nard is going to start today after she wasn't able to finish the game last night. And we welcome you back to Nashville. Pam Ward along with Hall of Fame coach Gail Gestencourt. Steffi Sorensen will join us shortly. Third time these two teams have met. Asia Wilson, the big question mark, did not play in the regular season finale last week against this team in Knoxville. We expect to see her tonight, but we're not sure. Yeah, we do expect to see her. She's not starting tonight, but she didn't play in the first two matchups. And it's not just the 2,000 points, the 1,000 rebounds, all of the block shots. It is her heart, her spirit, her determination to win that South Carolina was missing when she was out of those games. And all these shots are from warm-ups when Asia came out right away. She was dancing. She was singing something in the air tonight by Phil Collins, which wasn't even, she wasn't even born when that was written. And she has been terrific in this tournament, has not lost a game, was the outstanding player of this tournament just last year. And we certainly hope to see Asia Wilson. For more on South Carolina, let's go to Steffi Sorensen. Well, guys, I have covered every game here at this SEC tournament, and there's one team that everyone's been really talking about. It's Mississippi State. For good reason, they're undefeated. We're talking about the Nat defending national champions taking the floor today, South Carolina Gamecocks. No one's really talking to them, talking about them, flying a little bit under the radar, playing with no pressure on them. Everyone's talking about Mississippi State, but they've got the best player on the country in Asia Wilson, the point guard that led them to the national championship, and Ty Harris looking to make a big splash here tonight in Nashville. And you're right, nobody is really talking about South Carolina. They have six losses on the season. Jamie Nard is out there. Asia Wilson starts the game on the bench. Kia Herbert Harrigan, who started for Asia last week in Knoxville, had a good game, 17 points. Now, Tennessee won that game 65 to 46. They outscored South Carolina 29 to nine in the third quarter, and that was all she wrote. Avina Westbrook puts it up, and that is off the mark. South Carolina was out-rebounded in both games against Tennessee, but again, Asia Wilson played, did not play in either one, was out with an ankle for the first game, and then vertigo effects last week. There's the South Carolina lineup, Herbert Harrigan starting for Asia. Kleine 
with the miss and a one-handed rebound and put back by Alexis Jennings. Now Jennings did not have a great game last Sunday in Knoxville. Well, she she was one for five. Not so great. Not as a I said. good game at all. So <laughs> that's a great sign for South Carolina for her to come out and score immediately. Now that's a good sign for Tennessee. They at least tried to get it into Mercedes Russell. It was Aaron. Mercedes Russell took two shots yesterday. Two. Yeah, she had an amazing game. 10 for 10 from the free throw line, and thank goodness, 15 rebounds. She went and got her own shot several times because they were not looking into her. They were taking quick shots because of that Auburn pressure. 10 free throws, 10 for 10 is a new career high for Mercedes, who comes out to contest the shot by Jackson, the freshman in the starting lineup after Lindsey Spann's season and career ended. Russell gets it again, and then a nice pass to Westbrook, who couldn't finish. Yeah, and that's the thing. Mercedes Russell is an excellent passer, so give her the ball. Avina Westbrook missed her the first time down the floor, but got her the second time. Nard, everybody going to keep a very close eye on Jamie, who ran into the foot of an Auburn player and then crashed to the floor, hurt her hip, seemed a little dazed as well. Came back for one play, scored a bucket, and went out. And she gets rejected by Herbert Harrigan. But I, I like that she took the ball to the basket. And this is yesterday, you see, she was driving in hard. That's what she does. Tripped over the foot of an opponent, the Auburn player, and, and it was painful. You could tell her hip was hurting. That will help Jamie Nard feel a whole lot better. She nails the three, and Jamie really has been struggling from three pretty much for the second half of the season, particularly in conference games. Well, she has been shooting just now 24% from the three. So that's a big sign for and a good sign for Tennessee coming out focused. I can wonder how sore Jamie is and if she does get knocked at all on that hip. Pliny drives right by three Lady Vols and gets hit by Davis. Yeah, and Jamie Nard, this is a great screen by Mercedes Russell. Wide open, and they're playing percentages right now. South Carolina's playing man-to-man, -man, but it's a sagging man-to-man, -man, and they're daring the Tennessee players to shoot. Nard yesterday against Auburn, 17 points, four assists, did play 32 minutes. And there you see left the game in the fourth quarter. Here is Donnie Kleine at the line. 75% free throw shooter. She had 14 last Sunday in Knoxville, but was only four of 12 from the floor. Regular season finale for both teams. A game in which Asia Wilson stayed home in Columbia, didn't even make the trip to Knoxville. Flying one for two. Westbrook took a step trying to get away from Jackson. Two turnovers now. Dawn Staley in her 10th year at South Carolina. Won three straight SEC tournament titles. No one has ever won it four times in a row. Tennessee won it three times in a row twice. And the biggest star on her resume, which has a lot of good stuff on it, is winning the national championship last year. Herbert Harrigan follows her own shot. He's such a skilled player. And she struggled with injuries throughout the season. Her numbers aren't as high as you would expect. But that big game she had against Tennessee, Last Sunday, I think, gave her a lot of confidence. Had the 17 points and really had a terrific SEC tournament last year when she averaged over nine points a game. Russell can't get it to fall. So over nine points a game in the SEC tournament, just five in the regular season. Herbert Harrigan off the mark. Tennessee looks to push it. Nard off the front of the rim. And Tennessee only played six players yesterday. And the sit, Sheridan Green only got in for four minutes. Asia Wilson getting ready to check in. <laughs> you can hear the excitement of the crowd. Here comes the SEC Player of the Year and the odds on favor to be National Player of the Year. Jackson on the baseline, can't do it. Russell with a good box out of Wilson, but Harris got the rebound. Three players converged on Asia. 
Nard chases it down. And again, the versatility of Jamie Nard. We heard Andy Landers and Mel Fortner talk about it in the studio show that she really can play so many different positions. So if she's out of the game, it's like you're missing almost three different players. Yeah, it makes it difficult. So, And she's not limping right now. She looks really good out there. Davis can't get it to go. No offensive board. South Carolina more than holding their owns on the own on the boards so far. And here comes the double again with Tennessee, but the double's late. And Asia Wilson is so smart. She makes a quick move to the basket before the double key team can get there. 23 points, 12 boards a game, leading her team in both important statistical categories, and she out rebounded Russell. Harris gave it to Kleine. I don't know if Danye was expecting it, but was able to get the shot off and was fouled. Holly Warlick in her six years as the head coach, 33rd on the staff at the University of Tennessee. They won the SEC tournament title four years ago, and then South Carolina has reeled off three straight since. Jamie Nard called for the last foul, sending Kleine to the line. Donye, a redshirt junior from Newark, New Jersey, who has seen her role greatly expanded from last year. First year starter. And you're gonna see South Carolina get back into their press. They're picking and choosing when they press after free throws. They saw what Auburn was able to do to Tennessee and cause turnovers, and they're hoping to do the same. Davis, who was the hero last night, missed on the baseline. Three on three. Harris saw a clear path to the basket, took it, but couldn't get it to go. And you can see Mercedes Russell is trailing into the play. <laughs> Jamie Nord has all the points for Tennessee. So the two injured players in there, Nard hits her first shot of the game, and Asia comes in and is simply being Asia. Did you believe in second chances? Walker, party and Well, here is the new beginning. Knocked out the shot clock. Are you serious? Presented by Prism on ESPN. Three times we've had a three-peat in the SEC. Tennessee first did it, 1998 to 2000. She would behold squad on the stars, and then again from 2010 to 2012. And we have an active streak going with the South Carolina Gamecocks, who have won the last three, all of them with Asia Wilson. 2015, the SEC Tournament Championship between these two clubs. Jordan Reynolds, one of the stars for Tennessee, helped give them a lead. And Lisa Welch, one of the great signees out of the state of South Carolina. And Tiffany Mitchell, now in the WNBA. She was the MVP, capped it all off. And South Carolina and freshman Asia Wilson win 62 to 46. There you see in the last six seasons, Tennessee has beaten South Carolina the most twice this year to get it up to five, 0 for four against UConn. And you see the others and Tennessee, the only team to beat them twice this season. But again, they did it without Asia Wilson playing in either game. But still, you would think that would give them quite a boost of confidence coming in. Well, yeah, I think they're, both teams are very confident. I think South Carolina with or without Asia Wilson would be tough to beat three times, but you bring back the three-time SEC Player of the Year, and you're going to be loaded with confidence, and Tennessee is always a confident team. They've played a great schedule. They beat tremendous teams. They've lost, lost to some bad teams, but they beat the great teams. First time we've had a three-time SEC Player of the Year, Tennessee has gone about three and a half minutes without scoring. And you can see how far off these South Carolina defensive players are from the Tennessee scoring offense. They want to dare them to shoot from out. They don't want them to go into the big girl. 
Mercedes Russell. Russell off the side of the backboard. Good defense by Jennings after Tennessee ran a weave action. Twiney, good catch, and got it over to Wilson. Nice athletic play by Donye Kleine. And she's got four. It's a 9-0 Carolina run. And into the game for Tennessee, number one, Anastasia Hayes. And that's excellent, excellent defense by Jennings. She's got that big, strong body inside. And then Asia Wilson's just off to the races. Jennings called for the foul that sends Hayes to the line. One of three freshmen who get a lot of playing time for Holly Worlett. Grew up in Murfreesboro, which is about 30 miles from here. And this is another freshman who doesn't get a lot of time. Interesting, Kasi Kushkidawa comes into the game. Yeah, the coaches feel like she's been practicing very, very well and improves daily. So they're going to give her a shot here. And it gives Mercedes Russell a rest. 6'4 freshman from Atlanta did not play at all against Auburn last night. You see Tennessee has to change things up. They've gone to their 2-3 zone. Both teams like to change their defenses. Keep the offense out of their rhythm. Herbert Harrigan back in for Asia Wilson. And she, Alexis Jennings gets in and gets fouled. Yeah, Alexis Jennings, she looks so much more focused and determined than the player that we saw last Sunday at Tennessee. Pushkidawa called for the foul. Jennings, the Kentucky transfer, knocks down her fifth point of the game. Nine-point advantage for South Carolina. And this is one of the Achilles heels for this Tennessee team. It's the freshmen when they're in the backcourt. And both Hayes, you're going to see, she goes over and back. And Avina Westbrook already has two turnovers. She had two turnovers in the game yesterday against Auburn. So both, both these guards average almost three and a half turnovers a game. Ty Harris so poised as a true freshman took over as a starter once the conference season began and led him to a national championship. And she had 28 points, a career high, the first time these two, two, two teams played as Hayes ends the drought. But Harris only had two points last Sunday in Knoxville. Yeah, she just didn't appear to be herself. She wasn't aggressive looking for her shot. And with Asia Wilson out, they needed her to score big. Asia Wilson coming back in. That is two fouls, two quick fouls on Kush Kittawa. So here's the... Dawn Staley is going to manage Asia Wilson's minutes as she comes back from the effects of vertigo, has not played in a week. Jennings goes out and gets some words of wisdom from her head coach. Wilson being guarded by Nard on the inbounds that Kleine could not handle. That is the first South Carolina turnover. Tennessee scored 18 points off tennis off South Carolina turnovers last week. Tennessee loves this little weave because it allows Hayes. She's so good at turning the corner and getting to the basket. Sheridan Green, the college transfer from London, England, got. A chance for a put back, couldn't do it. Harris looking inside, boy, what a battle between Davis and Wilson. And yeah, she they get got, Davis, excuse me, for her second foul. Yeah, she got fouled, just posting up. Great duck in by Asia. Watch this, the ball's on the weak side. Strong duck in, she gets an elbow to the face. And that's what I love. One of the many things I love about Asia Wilson is how hard she works on that low block. She'll come to the high post, to the short corner, but she knows where her bread and butter is. And when she posts up, you know it. She's demanding the ball. And she gets it quite often. 
Find a way to get it to their superstar. Westbrook comes into the game as Davis sits down with two fouls and no points for Tennessee. Well, and that's a big loss for Tennessee. You know, she played all 40 minutes yesterday. Uh, Coach Warlick said, I trust the ball in her hands. I'm going to get her the ball. She's earned my trust. Even though she's a freshman, I don't care. We trust her, we believe in her, and we're going to get the ball to her. And she damaged South Carolina both times, 18 points and 21 points respectively in the two games. And now she is on the bench with two fouls. Inside, Green couldn't handle the pass. One on three. And Harris decides to wait for some backup. Now it's Green and Wilson in a battle. Nard came over and forced the turnover. And that's Jamie Nard being so aggressive. And she anticipates so well. She came over and got that steal before the pass even went in. She knew it was coming. Bianca Jackson fouled Hayes, who was the SEC's sixth woman of the year this year. And boy, she is fast as lightning coming down. Gives them a whole nother gear when she's in there. Well, and that's what's nice. They're two different styles of play. Avina Westbrook is a big point guard. Sees the court well, but not that quick. But will you get Hayes on the floor? She's quick on quick. 5'7 <laughs> guard. Averaging over nine points a game. And three and a half assists per game, which was 13th in the league. Asia Wilson takes another break, this time in favor of freshman Lily Cruzette. You see Tennessee's got its press of its own, and they press after free throws as well, so very controlled presses. And we get South Carolina out of control. And Grisette, who just came into the game, charged into Jackson. And just, oh, that's close. Looked like the heel might have been inside the restricted area. But a nice job by Jackson to step up. And said is she's a phenomenal athlete and she's going to be a, an excellent player, but she's still finding her way at this level. Six foot freshman from Durham. We'll have a lot more playing time next year after Wilson graduates. Green's not going to shoot it from there, so you saw them back off. Nard with the save. And those are the intangibles that Jamie Nard brings to the game. And Herbert Harrigan got a hand on it. I thought there might have been some contact there. Nard couldn't keep the ball in. And it was an inbounds pass that Tennessee blew yesterday that gave Auburn the chance to tie the game. And they've had some issues with inbounding passes that we have seen over the course of the season. Jardine Green with the pick. And now Jackson showing some speed. Westbrook, no. Green, a couple of offensive rebounds. And Tennessee comes up empty. Tiny travel. South Carolina may be playing a little too fast right about now. And Asia Wilson is on the bench. And Asia Wilson just stood up and put both hands, the, the universal two palms down, saying, slow down, take it easy to her teammates. Yeah, she looked just like a coach over on the sidelines. <laughs> coach him up. Five turnovers in her last six trips for Dawn Staley's team. And she kind of wears her heart on her sleeve over there. And, and with the expression on her face. Hey, he's got the green screen, thinking about it. And she's just holding the ball way too long. Drives in. Boy, Tennessee, how many shots have they missed in the paint? You love that they're crashing the offensive glass, but they need to slow down, gather, and finish. Pliny, short to end the first quarter. South Carolina with Asia Wilson.
back on the floor, leading it 16 to nine. Asia with six points off the bench. Welcome back to the SEC Women's Tournament in Nashville, where Tennessee shot just 10%, two of 20 in the first quarter. They trail South Carolina 16 to nine. Asia Wilson, who did not play in either regular season game against Tennessee, she's back and she's good. <laughs> and I think everybody on the court was so, look at her teammates cheering. They're so happy to see her because she knows what she brings to the table. She rebounds the basketball. She's going to score on the inside. you got to jam that right shoulder. She loves going over that right shoulder. And then you know she's going to run the floor. Brings so much to the table. Just played four minutes in the first quarter and scored six points and had three rebounds. And Sheila Foster's record is fixing to fall. Asia needs 23 points to tie that all-time scoring record in South Carolina history. She might get there tonight. Yeah, just look, we're looking at the stats right now, and whoo, Tennessee shooting 10% from the floor, two for 20. Now, Dina Westbrook with four turnovers. So she, she's she's on a roll because she had seven last night against Auburn. So she has got to do a better job taking care of the ball. Every possession matters. She's on a bad roll. Jennings somehow was able to collect herself after taking contact. South Carolina did not exactly shoot the lights out in the first quarter. They were just 5 of 15 for 33%. Asia 2 of 2, so the rest of the team 3 of 13. Not good. And Harris on the run, 4 on 3, waits for number 22. Asia wanted it, had a little mismatch against Hayes. But they didn't need her in that possession. Jennings is on a mission. I, I think she's trying to really redeem herself from that last matchup last Sunday. Those two posts, Jennings is four for four. Asia Wilson is two for two. Jennings again, just one for five with three points last Sunday in Knoxville in Asia's absence when they needed her to pick up some of the slack. Jennings left open. Nard with the weak side rebound. Go back inside, Alexis. <laughs> that's, that's her. That's her bread and butter getting inside the paint trying to score. Hayes can't get it into the bottom of the net, but the ball is off of South Carolina. Yeah, and Alexis Jennings doing a nice job. She's again going over right shoulder, puts the ball on the deck. And this is a problem, and we've talked about it all season long. Four touches for Mercedes, and it's not just her scoring that's important. It's because she's such a great passer when she gets the ball. And when she gets the ball, she draws defensive attention, right? There's all sorts of positives for Tennessee. Only got two shots off all of last night against Auburn, made one of them. Just two shots tonight so far. Wilson with the sweet cut and finish. How good is Asia Wilson? Well, that was just a great read. She has a tremendous understanding of the game, and her teammates are getting her the ball in the right position where she can score fluidly. And a nice job. You see a great screen inside. Gets it, finishes with her left hand. Gamecock's rolling. Tennessee down big to South Carolina in this SEC quarterfinal, but Holly Warlick is staying positive with her team. We've gotten good looks, we just had the ball. We're gonna, it's gonna fall. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Hey, we're all right. I like that, just keep battling, they're gonna fall. Keep battling, they're gonna fall. So Asia Wilson back did not start today, but she in six minutes already has eight points. Let's go over to Steffi Swanson. 
Well, it's hard not to be impressed with Asia Wilson, what she's been able to do on the floor today. But I've been impressed with what she's been able to do on the bench as Don Salies has tried to manage her minutes. Think about what this player has gone through this week. And she has been laser focused on the bench, coaching her teammates. First one up to high five everyone and also making sure that everyone's on the same page. You know, this is a player that the team looks to, especially with the bright lights on here in Nashville. Well, and that's a good point, Steffi. And that's what makes Asia Wilson so special. We talked about it in the open. It's not just all of her points, rebounds, blocks, and everything else. It's what she does off the court that makes her teammates better and helps them believe they can win in any and every game they're in. Davina Westbrook scores after Tennessee had missed 12 straight shots. They were hit. They were two for 24 before that. 8.3%. And now two in a row, Jackson. The winner of this game will get the winner of our nightcap between Missouri and Georgia in one of the semifinals tomorrow. And Asia still hasn't missed. And I love that the post passing for South Carolina is so impressive. Jennings and Wilson, they look for one another. Finally, Russell gets a shot off, but it didn't go. And how many missed layups have we seen from Tennessee in this game? And Asia Wilson looking in. Jennings, so smart. When you get the depth ball down low to your post player, you always want to dive your high post, whether you're going against man or zone. 18 points in the paint for South Carolina. Russell thought she got fouled. So did Holly Warlick and the majority of this crowd, a lot of orange in the stands being very quiet so far. Yeah, and I like the Tennessee's going inside. Mercedes Russell's, Russell's being double teamed. Now she needs to start looking for her teammates. Another turnover. Hayes tried a low percentage pass. Sixth turnover for the Lady Balls. Rosette off the mark, but Jennings, boy, Alexis Jennings is having a terrific first half. She is on a mission. Another giveaway by Tennessee. Boy, you get Asia Wilson back, and now the, the double power in the post with Jennings playing so well. Yeah, and Tennessee, you know, they turn the ball over against Auburn. They barely got away with it. You're not going to get away with it against a great team like South Carolina. They will make you pay for those turnovers. Yeah, we have seen that so far tonight. Asia Wilson played almost four minutes in that stretch. And now she gets another breather. Jennings, 11 points and nine rebounds. She only had 15 points combined in two regular season games. And Holly Warlick has been assessed a technical foul. Dean Lockwood, the assistant, trying to Hold it back along with Mimi Jackson. And she says she's saying she wants a call. I think she thought Mercedes Russell down on the other end got fouled on the shot. And now the Tennessee fans, many of them come to their feet. Jamie Nard huddles up the teammates on the floor. Could this be a technical with a purpose? If there's any, that's not a technical. If that's what she got called a technical for, <laughs> uh, that should not be a technical. That's, that's, that's a bad, bad call. So if you can't complain a little bit, as a former coach, having received several technicals, <laughs> you, you want to get your money's worth. That, she, Holly didn't get her money's worth on that one. Being told that Holly Warlick was warned in the first quarter to cool it. You can still, you have a right to say, please call the foul. She might not have used the word please. No, I don't think those were her exact words, but, but we didn't, you know, look really didn't not see overly, anything too egregious. She wasn't overly demonstrative. But um, you know what? That's passed now. Hopefully her team, she's fighting for her team. Now it's time for her team to step up and play. And it's gotten the crowd into it as they yell, go Lady Vols. And 
Nashville is about two and a half hours away from Knoxville, an easy drive from there, and there are Tennessee fans all over the state who have come to Nashville this weekend. Ty Harris has not scored a field goal yet for Carolina. Herbert Harrigan with the little turnaround. Yeah, it's the posts that are dominating this game for South Carolina. Nard with her second made shot. And that was a long two. And now Hayes, three on one. Jackson, reverse land. Another missed layup. The first half shot chart will be an ugly one for Tennessee. Yeah, they're getting great looks. So many layups. But you gotta finish in this environment. There's your Wilson back at the scorer's table to check in. Alexis Jennings got it swatted away by Jackson from behind. One second to shoot as Asia comes in for Jennings. And look for a screen down low on Jackson for Jennings, excuse me, for Wilson to get a lob. Herbert Harrigan couldn't afford the bounce it didn't have enough time. Yeah, and that's knowing the shot clock. Eight turnover for South Carolina. Nard decides to drive it and draws the foul. Some contact, and we see she might be limping a little bit. Again, we had to leave the game with about five minutes left in the fourth quarter yesterday after she fell hard on her hip. Nard, yeah. like Russell, a fifth-year senior. Yeah. South Carolina, they're not going to give you anything easily. So at this stage of the game, it's the want to, it's the will to. And I love that Nard's being aggressive, taking the ball to the basket. Yeah, Herbert Harrigan, just she got her with the body. Up top, she she didn't get her up top, it was with the body. Nard, an 83% free throw shooter, gets to the line six and a half times per game. Tennessee among the nation's leaders in getting the line. 0 for 2 for Nard, but Russell finally gets her first bucket and does it on an offensive rebound. That's how she got her points yesterday. Rosette takes it right to Russell. No one there to rebound. Jackson. Nard dribbles away from trouble. Hayes, high off the glass, and Asia Wilson is able to grab the miss. And that's where Hayes, she's driving in to the trees. There are times she's just got to find an open teammate. Tennessee basketball. Yeah, Hayes is already one for seven from the floor. That's too many shots from your point guard. You gotta share the ball. Hayes Make each other better. Yep, Hayes, Westbrook, Jackson, Russell, all with just one field goal apiece. One out of 23 combined. One each out of 23 combined. Nard able to get into the paint. That's the lead down to 10. The steal, and Hayes puts it in. Here comes Tennessee. And ever since that technical foul from Holly Warwick, Tennessee's been on a run. But you can't stop Age Wilson. He's now got a dozen and is five for five from the floor, 12 points in nine minutes. Jackson trying to take Rosette off the dribble. And that's just an off-balance shot. Timeout taken by Dawn Staler. With 2.48 left to go in the first half. 
We will take a timeout as well. South Carolina up double digits in the quarterfinal. Coming up at halftime, we will take you to the talented trio to our left. Andy is ordering supper. That's uh, Maria Taylor, Nell Fortner, and Andy Landers as they will dissect what they have seen here and tell us what we can expect as Missouri takes on Georgia in our fourth and final quarterfinal tonight. Mississippi State and Texas A&M will play in the first semi tomorrow over on ESPNU. Mississippi State 31-0 after beating Kentucky today. So South Carolina out of the timeout. They've led by as many as 16. Another double team on Wilson. Kleine way off. And that's why you see they're not guarding Kleine. Anytime Asia touches the ball, it's going to be a double or a triple team. So they're going to dare other players to beat them. Kleine on the season, just 27% from three-point range. Just one second left on the shot clock. We saw South Carolina get the ball inbounds a little earlier in this quarter with one second left, but Herbert Harrigan took a dribble and did not get a shot off in time. That's more like it, but it was blocked from behind by Westbrook. And Harris got the loose ball. But that was a great cut by Jackson. Asia Wilson was double teamed the entire possession. Kleine that time decided not to take the wide open shot. Wilson sets the screen, rolls. Ten turnovers now for the Gamecocks. Have three more turnovers than Tennessee. It's still a good lead. Westbrook over the outstretched fingertips of Wilson, and it just rolled out. Kleine to Asia, who misses her first shot, and Jackson could not control the rebound. Asia Wilson had hit her first five shots coming off the bench, missing last Sunday's game against Tennessee with about a bout of vertigo. It prohibited her from even traveling to Knoxville. And let's see if Mercedes Russell, she's been up top setting screens. And once again, Hayes, I just feel like she's taking it too deep. She's, she's going against shot blockers. But Russell needs to get back in. There's a screen. She's inside. There you go. Give her the ball. Yep, and she's working against a freshman, too. But then she's got to finish. Hayes, out of nowhere, gets fouled by Wilson. First personal on Asia Wilson. Tennessee shooting just 21% from the floor. They're shooting only 10% after one quarter. And Hayes has been most of the offense off the bench. Tennessee has done a nice job. They've got 12 offensive rebounds. So if you're going to miss that many shots, you better go get the rebound. Hayes with 10 points. Lead back to eight after it had been as high as 16. Finding another jumper. Nard, little ball fake, and just missed. That was a beautiful ball fake, but another missed layup. Nard is three of eight from the floor tonight, playing with that hurt hip. A little less than three second difference between the two clocks. Another set of ball screen probably for Harris and just let her make a read. Inside to Krizak. Nice feed and the finish. And South Carolina getting superstar Asia Wilson back. 
take a 10-point lead into the half. Asia leading all scorers with 12 points. Alexis Jennings has 11. Annie Hayes with 10 for Tennessee. Here now is Steffi Sorensen with Don Staley. Well, Don, Tennessee shot just 20%, but what concerns you the most about them in the second half? Well, the ability to turn you over. We got to take better care of the basketball. Now, we got to, we got to defend our turnovers. If we don't take care of the ball, we have to defend it. But I, I like the pace. If we can get some buckets down there in the paint, so it, it's going to benefit us. What did you like from your front court there in the first half? I, I like the fact that they got to the paint. If we can get to the paint, it's a paint game. If we can score more points with them in the paint, I think it's gonna that's gonna be the the, the, the team that wins the basketball game. Thank you, Don. Thank you. you are watching Champ Week on the SEC network. Mississippi State and Texas AM will play in our first semifinal tomorrow. The winner of this game gets the winner of Georgia and Missouri, which is our nightcap coming up. Pam Ward along with Hall of Fame coach Gail Gustenkors. Steffi Sorensen is with us as well. Asia Wilson back healthy and playing well in the first half. Well, she is, and it was a dynamic duo in this game with Asia and Alexis Jennings going 10 for 13 from the field between them. And just Tennessee let Asia go inside and get to her right shoulder. But then Alexis Jennings, that was really the story. She was so determined with her effort. And that's the reason they're plus 14 on points in the paint in this game. And for Tennessee, it was the missed layups, missed opportunities. There's a reason now they're shooting only 20% from the floor. They've got their opportunities. They've just got to put them down. The 20% for Tennessee is a season low for a half. They shot eight of 40. They shot seven more shots than South Carolina. They're trailed by as many as 16 and are down 10 as we get things started. And Alexis Jennings looks like a new person. She is going to work. Had a subpar game when they played last Sunday in Knoxville. We've already referenced it, but gosh, that three point one for five, Alexis Jennings. Looks like she stayed in Knoxville. Nard crashes to the floor. Jennings makes perhaps her first mistake of the night as she fouled Jamie. I think they're going to give her three free throws. Yes, indeed, they are. Yeah, and that was a veteran play by Jamie Nard. She held the follow through, basically let herself get run into. To get to that free throw line, get some easy points. Hard playing on that hip that she landed hard on last night. Had to leave the, leave the game in the fourth quarter. And see her numbers from last night. 17 points and four assists. Led her team in both categories, but could not finish the game because of the hard hit. And you know, one thing we haven't talked much about, but Renaya Davis, she sat on that bench for 12 minutes in that first half because she had picked up that second foul. She is a key cog to this Tennessee offensive system and she's been playing so well. So we'll see what she does to start the second half. Nard got all three free throws. It was Davis's shot with a half a second left that sent Tennessee to this game in the first place, a three point win over Auburn. But Davis, as uh, Gail mentioned, only played eight minutes and took two shots, picked up two fouls and sat on the bench. And she has been scoring as well as anybody the last several games for the Lady Balls. Herbert Harrigan, who starts the second half just like she started the game for Asia Wilson, gets tied up. And the ball goes over to the Lady Balls. And that's Jamie Nard making plays that seniors make. We saw her, she gets fouled, she hits three free throws, then she gets on the deck, gets a loose ball tie up. Those are the plays. You don't, you don't want to go home. You want to keep playing. You want an SEC tournament championship. Tennessee, you saw there on the screen, seven steals already. Davis, it's bottled up. Russell's not going to shoot from there. And took a couple of shots in the first half. Renaya Davis off the rim. But Russell gets another offensive board. Something else that Tennessee did well in the first half. And that's working for your points right there by Mercedes Russell. Hi Harris. It's run into by Jamie Nard. Holly Warlick 
Spoke with Steffi Sorensen just a couple moments ago. Coach, you're only down by 10 points. You shot 20% from the yeah. floor. What did you say to your team? Just make layups, you know, go up. They're not fouling us. Just go up strong with the ball and, um, you know, gather yourself. I, we're getting good looks. I mean, we're getting layups, but we're just not making them. So we got to focus in and dial in and keep our defensive pressure and finish our shots. South Carolina's front court really got going there in that first half. What defensively can you do to slow them down? Well, we just got to be aware of where uh, Wilson and Jennings are. They, they just had our, their way with us. And, um, you know, we got to make, we got to keep a body on them at all the, t all the times and uh, just got to do a better job. Thank you, Holly. All right, thank you. Remember Harrigan, another big for South Carolina. In fact, she's the one starting for Wilson, scored on the last trip down the floor. Westbrook drives the lane, and they hit a layup. North Carolina breaks the press rather easily. Herbert Hare again, having her second straight coming out party at the SEC tournament. Asia turning into the most talented cheerleader in the building right now. Yeah, she's, she's cheering her team, excited about their play. And, and that's the great thing, you know, unfortunately she's missed some games, but it's allowed them to learn how to play without her. You never know when that's gonna come in handy. Sometimes she might get back in foul trouble. They've gotta learn how to play without her. And you're seeing tonight, they're playing very well when she's in and when she's off the court. Mercedes Russell hit another shot and then Jackson was run into by Jackson. Bianca helped up by Mimi and here comes Asia Wilson who played 13 minutes in that first half, scored 12 points. Coming back from Vertigo. Looking like the Asia Wilson we have seen all year en route to her third straight SEC Player of the Year award. Bianca Jackson helping mop things up. Yeah, Asia is just, she's so efficient. Makes everybody's job easier. Russell coming out to help on the trap. And Jennings got away with a walk, but Tennessee gets the ball back anyway. 13 turnovers for South Carolina, which is their season average. Jamie Nard, what a gamer. Jackson buries it. Time out. Mimi Jackson buries the three after Jamie Nard crashed to the floor again to get a loose ball. And this is what SEC tournament play is all about. That would have been an easy layup for South Carolina. Diving to the floor, making things happen. You saw Jamie Nard was still around midcourt when the ball went through the basket. A 16-point lead has been trimmed down to four. And there's a mismatch right now, but that ball screen allows Tennessee to switch and get matched up. They had the mismatch with Jennings. Over Harrigan, left it short. Jackson could not get two in a row to fall. And now South Carolina with numbers, and when one of them is Asia Wilson, you're in really good shape. And this is why Ty Harris is so good and leads the league in assists. Because you see Asia Wilson, you know who to get the ball to. <laughs> Tennessee's making a comeback? No, ma'am. I gotta get the ball to the SEC Player of the Year. That was on Westbrook. You were a point guard back in the day. How nice would that have been to have her as one of your options? Well, I'd probably would have gotten <laughs> a few thousand more assists. Andrew Wilson is just a special player. 15 points and counting. 
Over here again, being pounded by Nard. Another hustle play by Nard, who got fouled. The basket will not count. And these Tennessee fans, you've got to love the play of Jamie Nard. The hustle, the heart. The hurt hip. Yeah, this is a kid that, I mean, you know she's got to still be feeling the effects of that hip. We saw it happen, and she is playing all out all the time. Herbert Harrigan out, Rosette back in. Nard challenged Wilson and picking it up. Another missed layup. Wilson stuffed Russell. Russell missed the follow. More paint rolls for Tennessee. Yeah, and I credit Wilson with that, not just because she had a block, but she changes shots because you know she can block for your shot. And Jamie Nard, I believe, is going to be called for the foul. And Rachel Wilson lost her headband. The ball game here, South Carolina up seven. SEC tournament headlines coming up, our nightcap. Missouri takes on Georgia for the second time. Georgia won in Athens during the regular season in their only matchup. Mississippi State now 31-0 after beating Kentucky today. Only Tennessee won, what, 43 straight at one point. Uh, has a better winning streak for any SEC team. And Kennedy Carter had been quiet in the first two games against LSU. She was the antithesis of quiet today. Well, yeah, and she struggled in the first half. But in the second half, she was ready to go and uh, just did a tremendous job finding ways to score. She was hitting three. She was taking it to the basket. Did a nice job helping A&M get that win. And we will see her tomorrow against Mississippi State. That will be the first semifinal. Tennessee, by the way, won 46 straight games. That's the SEC record for the longest winning streak ever. And Mississippi State now at 31. Kennedy Carter, 21 of her 27 points came in the second half, 14 in the fourth quarter alone. Hit some big free throws as they came from behind to beat LSU. Asia Wilson. <laughs> great reactions. You could have an Asia Wilson cam and get some great stuff. She's just frustrated she didn't get the, the bucket to fall. Let's go over to Steffi Sorensen from Warren, Carolina. Yeah, guys, I was in that huddle listening to Dawn Staley, just trying to settle her team down. I thought the most important message that she said was, South Carolina will dictate what plays that we run, not Tennessee. So look for them to be much more settled in their half-court uh, execution. Well, Steffi, that's a great point. And Ty Harris is just the point guard to do it. You know, she is extension of Dawn on the floor. And sometimes when things get up and down the floor, you forget to make good decisions. You forget where your bread and butter is. We've seen all night where it is for South Carolina. It's on the inside. Jennings and Wilson in particular have been terrific. All thrown out of bounds. That last foul, by the way, for Tennessee was on Renaya Davis, who has three personal fouls and has not scored in 13 minutes on the floor. And that's someone they need. She's been great against South Carolina. 18 points last Sunday in Knoxville, 21 points when they played in Columbia. Both games won by Tennessee, both games with no Asia Wilson for Carolina. Yeah, not only the 18 points she had last Sunday, but 10 rebounds as well. So she's been playing at an elite level really the last seven games. She's being shut out tonight. Jackson, bounce pass into Jennings. The Grisette, another freshman, took it away and then lost it. And Asia Wilson subbed out and she went right back into the locker room here at Bridgestone Arena. Moving very quickly. Again, did not start tonight, but he's been incredibly effective. 17 points on seven shots. The Tennessee has missed their last six shots. They had trimmed the lead down to four before their cold spell. Hayes misses badly on the drive. And that's where I would have liked to see Renaya Davis take the ball inside. She's not hitting her jumper tonight. She's got great size, and that was one of the things Coach Warlick said where she's grown as a player. She's learned 
when you're not hitting your outside shot, go ahead and take it in. So it's time for her to start taking that ball in. Davis in her last seven games coming in, averaging 17 points per game, three double-doubles, including, as Gail referenced, against South Carolina last weekend in Knoxville. Mercedes Russell picks up the foul, and Carolina in the bonus. Here's Alexis Jennings, who started her collegiate career at Kentucky. She was on the SEC All-Freshman team as a Wildcat in 2015. And she has been a very nice compliment to Asia Wilson this season. Wilson still back in the locker room. And Tennessee is going through another bad spell. Gisette walked. And Jennings and Fliney both come up to the freshman and calm her down. And probably you're saying, yeah, you, you walked. Was, she walked. She did walk. Yeah. So now Asia Wilson out there. Jennings drawing the defensive assignment on Russell. First layup, and finally, Renaya Davis has her first points of the night. And that's a great job by Renaya Davis to go inside. Asia's out of there, and it shows you again the speed and athleticism. Davis has great length at 6'2. at six, Harris inside, trying to draw contact. Jennings did not get a foul call. Good defense by Russell, and now Davis charges. Trini drew it, that's four fouls on Renaya Davis. Yeah, and that looked like a charge. About 20 feet away, you could see she was going in full steam. So excellent job by Kleine to step up and take that charge. Plenty of Richard Jr. just planted her there. You're right, because it, it looked like there was no way Davis was going to pass that ball. And she didn't, picked up her fourth. And she heads to the bench yet again with just three points on the night. Does have three assists. And South Carolina getting a bit sloppy. 16 turnovers, five in this third quarter. Jennings gets a breather. As Ladeja Williams comes in, 6'2 freshman from Bradenton, Florida. Williams with a double double tonight, 15 points, 10 rebounds. Russell spins and gets fouled. They go right after the freshman. And that's a good job by Tennessee. Get the ball inside, attack that freshman, let Russell go to work. Mercedes Russell last night against Auburn took a grand total of two shots. 20 touches tonight. A couple of putbacks for her. She has taken 10 shots, five times as many as last night. Yeah, and she has not been, she shoots 60% from the floor on the season, but tonight she's struggling. She's half, three for 10. Half that. And she is delivering at the free throw line. She was 10 for 10 last night and came in hitting 17 straight. So now it's up to 19 in a row for Mercedes Russell. And that's a, a player whose career she shoots 62% from the free throw line. Another foul picked up by Grisette, this time on the charge, her second. Is that the big girl taking a charge? She might have been moving. I, I think she was still moving to the side. Maybe that's just a little respect foul as Russell, the fifth-year senior, drew it on the freshman. So Jennings, after a brief rest, comes back in for South Carolina. Already with her sixth double-double of the season. And again, she's Mercedes Russell was open. Guards, have, your first look always has to be inside. Well, Russell working so hard to get position, and they're not. Well, and that's the problem. And then she steps out to yep. go set a ball screen, which takes her away from the basket. But Hayes uses her quickness to get her first basket in the second half. And now the fans, again, 
get into it, down five. Hayes with the hustle play, and then ends up with the band. In Tennessee, it's those hustle plays, and Annie Hayes, she is so quick, and she does not give up on a play. Going into the enemy band, that's South Carolina's band under the bucket. Gold Lady Vols is the champ. Over Harrigan, gets it over to Jennings, who waited a while. And Westbrook was able to get in on it. And here comes Asia Wilson. Sprinting back towards the bench. i just tell her to sprint right up to that <laughs> scores table if they I don't was Staley. <laughs> just keep on sprinting. Hayes. Two in a row for Annie Hayes. Three-point advantage. It's the closest it's been since the first quarter. An 8 nothing Tennessee run. Jackson knocks it out. Yeah, I hope somebody told Dawn Staley that Asia's actually back on the bench. A nice job again. Running their little weave. Annie Hayes, yes, she's been more effective driving when Asia Wilson, the supreme shot blocker, is not in the game. Ty Harris takes a three, just off the back rim, but a fresh 30 thanks to Herbert Harrigan. In South Carolina, they're looking to, to milk the clock. But Tennessee's gonna get a final shot of this quarter. Yep, about 10 second difference. Herbert Harrigan from the baseline, nails it. So her offensive rebound gave him a second chance, and she delivered. Shot clock is off. And I'll look for Annie Hayes. She's been driving all night, so high ball screen, and she'll go to the basket. But she lost it. And she made that move too early, too, and that's another freshman error. There's still four seconds left on the shot clock. You want to take the last shot. And Hayes also shaking up a little bit. She just needed to hold up. Yeah, she just lost the ball. That's injury to insult. Staying in the game at Donald's High School All-American, part of the number one rated freshman class this season. Four seconds left. Jennings gets it into Harris. Didn't get a good look. Just a little bit too strong off the back iron. But Tennessee has made a game out of this. They were down 10 at the half, and they have cut it to a five-point advantage. Fourth quarter coming up. SEC Women's Tournament coming your way from Nashville, Tennessee. A reasonable facsimile of Elvis on Broadway where there's all sorts of music going, it seems, 24 hours a day. And Tennessee, they have made it a game in the third quarter. Well, yeah, and they've been in the attack mode in this quarter. Moving the ball, they're getting into the paint. They had 14, uh, they were minus 14 in playing points. But that quarter now, they're min only minus eight. So great job getting to the basket. And they've really made a change with their defense. They've become much more aggressive and attacking. Now, Asia Wilson has been subbing in and out of the game all night. But she went back to the locker room for an extended time. And that is when Tennessee made its run, outscoring a made to four, forcing three turnovers. And she is back in the game. Tennessee has 21 points off of 18 South Carolina turnovers to get back in it. South Carolina with the ball. How about South Carolina's guards haven't, haven't scored a field goal? Yeah, and that's what I was just going to talk about. 0 for 15 from the South Carolina guards. That's why Asia Wilson has to be in the game because all of their scoring is coming from their post players. And she's drawing a double team. So you've got to have that other post in there that can score, which we just saw with Herbert Harrigan. 
Herbert Harrigan now with a dozen. She only averages seven per game. She had 17 at Knoxville on Sunday when Asia was also out. Nice feed. Nard to Russell, who can't believe she missed it. I can't believe she missed it. That's a 60% field goal shooter. It's a right-handed layup. She is 3 of 11 now from the floor. Player who is among the nation's leaders in field goal percentage, Asia Wilson, the real deal. And she just comes in and has an immediate impact. She, you know where she's going. She's going to the basket. Tennessee does a nice job stepping up, but Nard makes the cardinal sin. You don't save the ball under your own basket. The numbers for Asia. And that's in 16 minutes. She has 20 points. That's a pretty efficient coach. That's about as efficient as it gets. 7-0 run, South Carolina answering. Westbrook met Herbert Harrigan's hand. The ball goes over to South Carolina. That was an exceptional block by Herbert Harrigan. Those little guards, they think they're going in. They've got a wide open layup. South Carolina post players. The timing is just impressive. Herbert Harrigan finishes on the other end. And this is what the South Carolina faithful have wanted to see from Herbert Harrigan. She gets the block down on one end, but finishing with contact, sometimes she wants to be a finesse player and she is a stretch four. And look at Asia. You gotta love that. The emotion, the passion. And Herbert Harrigan, we mentioned it as a freshman last year, played very well in the SEC tournament in Greenville, South Carolina. There were a lot of expectations coming into the season and she did not meet them. A lot of inconsistencies, but boy, she has been terrific tonight. Nard. Wilson block. South Carolina scored on its first three trips on the offensive end in this quarter. And that's with Asia Wilson in. Coincidence? Not at all. And that is the first field goal made by a South Carolina guard tonight. Pliny from three. And now the South Carolina fans have something to holler about. An 11 nothing run as we take a timeout. We have one more game left. It is the third seed Georgia Bulldogs taking on the sixth seed Miami or Missouri Tigers. And there is UGA warming up in the back. Mississippi State going to take on Texas A&M after LSU lost to A&M earlier today. Big second half for Kennedy Carter. And the winner of this game will get either Georgia or Missouri. Coverage begins at 5 Eastern time, 4 local time tomorrow. Asia Wilson. How important is she? I mean, there's, I mean, the numbers you could talk about all day, but you just, it's, it's 11 nothing that South Carolina has outscored Tennessee in the fourth quarter, and Asia started the fourth quarter. Yeah, and it's, it is no coincidence. When she's in there, this team is so much better, and she gives confidence to all of the other players on her team. And it's not just Asia, as Russell just picked up her third foul. Look what. Herbert Harrigan and Jennings are doing. They have combined for 50 of their 59 points. Yeah, when you've got those three playing the way that they are, and again, when Asia's in, she's double teamed, so it opens it up for that other post player, but they're both playing with purpose. Hayes to Jackson, and another missed layup. And Tennessee has had so many opportunities, just playing too fast. Finally, bounce pass to Jackson, rolled out, but Asia Wilson cures a lot of ills. And still fired up as the lead goes to 18. Biggest of the night for the Gamecocks. Nard gave it up to Russell. 
And Russell just has not been big and strong with the basketball tonight. She has missed nine of her 12 shots. Mimi Jackson with a good defensive play, but South Carolina retains possession as we go under seven minutes. Renai Davis getting ready to check back in for Tennessee. Their super freshman has only two points and four fouls. Ty Harris misses on the drive. Charlie Cream has Tennessee as a number three seed. Nard off glass. And you just wonder, does Tennessee have enough gas in the tank to make a comeback? You know, they played last night, and it, that, they probably celebrated a great bit last night after the game, too, because it was such an emotional win. Asia Wilson just got two offensive rebounds on Mercedes Russell. He comes away with a smile. She's padding her stats now. Twenty-four points, twelve rebounds, and a fourth block. Whoa, that was nasty. That's your national player of the year right now. That's my national player of the year, and it should be everyone's. Fiftieth career double double. How about that for Asia Wilson? Still smiling as she sits down over on the bench. Charity and Green, rebound. Westbrook floats it in. And this is the lineup that started for Don Staley tonight. Herbert Harrigan starting for Asia Wilson. 15 points for Herbert Harrigan. Yeah, and I think it was Alexis Jennings, though, really, that set the tone early with the physical play and the determined spirit. Nard picks up another foul. A tough night for Jamie, boy. She's, she's been on the floor a lot tonight. 12 points, nine rebounds, playing on a bad hip. But See her limping a little bit more again. Well, when coaches talk about laying it out, all out on the line, leave it all out on the floor, she has done exactly that tonight. Great leadership from the fifth year senior. And Dawn Staley's done a great job managing Asia Wilson's minutes. She's had her in and out tonight and just great production from all of the post players. 24 points, 12 rebounds in 19 minutes. For Asia Wilson, a little delay as uh, moisture is being mopped up from the floor. Well, you know, in the last two games Asia's played in, she's averaged 28 points and 16 rebounds. So that's when you know an elite player, the elite player is playing like the champion she is. Harris got tied up by Westbrook, who's whistled for the foul. Her third. South Carolina in the bonus. So Ty Harris heads to the free throw line. And we've talked about Herbert Harrigan, Jennings, and Asia Wilson being brilliant, but the, the backcourt, including Harris at the line now, tied 0 for 7 from the floor. Does have eight assists and just three turnovers. But this is the second straight game that Harris has played against Tennessee where she has not shot the ball effectively. Pause for concern? I would think so. You know, she was shooting at a very high clip for a long period of time, but then she's hit a little skid right now, and you want to all be playing at your best. And if your point guard, if, if teams start sagging off of her, then it's going to make it more difficult for Asia Wilson and your post players inside. Count it. Annie Hayes. She has been the big offensive star for Tennessee. Yeah, and she puts it into another gear. And Kleine's a really good defensive player, and she just blew by Kleine. Three-point play. 
Mays has 17 points. She and Nard, who has 12, the only Lady Vols in double figures. And you won't see, I don't think you'll see South Carolina take quick shots right now. They're going to milk the clock with Asia on the bench. Let her rest. Inside five minutes. It's the backcourt for Carolina, very different from what they envisioned. Bianca Cuevas Moore and Lindsey Spann both out for the year with injuries. And that's a charge drawn by Hayes. South Carolina up 15. When we come back, we'll hear from Dawn Staley and some of her thoughts on her greatest player. Asia Wilson is in an easy conversation for me to have because I've watched her grow and, and grow. And when I'm talking about growing, not just as a freshman, I've seen her when she was a sixth grader. She came to our camps and she couldn't throw it in the ocean. Now, is having one of the best, incredible careers that any SEC player's ever had. Uh, to be a three-time player of the year in this league, something that has not been done before. She's shown on women's basketball, you know, how you win and how you win with grace. And just wrap your head around what Asia Wilson has done. First off, the fact that there's never been three-time SEC Player of the Year with all the great players that have come through, catchings, holds claws, so many others. But that's just a little bit of, of the awards that she's gotten. But what she has meant to this program, she's from Hopkins, South Carolina, just down the road from Columbia. She and Dawn have a great relationship. And uh, it's just been special to watch her all four years. Well, it has been. We've been very privileged to watch her growth along the way. It's hard to believe, even as a sixth grader, which is what, like 11 years oldish, that she couldn't throw usually, the ball in the ocean. Those big kids coach. usually can't. No? <laughs> Get to develop the touch? That's right. In addition to all of her uh, wonderful scoring tonight, Asia actually has four blocks. Carolina has 10. That's the fourth time this year they've had double-digit blocks as a team. And now Asia should be able just to sit the rest of this one out so she can be fresh tomorrow for the semis. Nard. It's like there's an evil like spirit up there swatting all of their shots away. Yeah, when they, if they look at this tape, it's it's all about the missed layups. If they look at this, would you look at it? Uh, you know what, I probably, <laughs> I don't know if I would because you want to look forward. If they end up losing this game, you're getting ready for the NCAA tournament. So it's, it's another new season. It's a new chapter um, that you're looking forward to. So you, you would want to learn from this, but it's the missed layups, and you don't want your kids thinking about mm -hmm. missed layups. Yeah, because that's certainly not positive reinforcement. Nard found by Kleine. Jamie, 14 points and 11 rebounds, her 10th double-double of the season. And again, playing on a hip that she fell on last night. Nard gets one out of two. Just a 12-point game, so. There's another turnover. Looked like a lot of contact. We couldn't see exactly what happened. Jackson and Hayes, though, both hit the floor hard. The back of Kleine's feet might have got clipped. Yeah, she got clipped. But no foul call. Bianca Jackson a little bit shaken up, but she's staying in there. Oh, that was Jackson. Does Tennessee have enough time left? Nard with a rebound, but Jennings is there to take it away. Then gives it away. Westbrook with the finish. And Tennessee's making a little run. I know Dunn doesn't want to bring Asia back in, but she, she might need to bring her back in just to calm her team down. And there's Nard. She's in on every single hustle play for Tennessee.
And that's where, with Jennings, you'd rather get a five-second call than turn the ball over underneath the opponent's basket. And here comes Asia Wilson. Not surprising. Time to take a look now at playing with style brought to you by Bell. And it was sort of a, a big storyline. Would Asia Wilson even play today after she came back, with, didn't play last Sunday with Vertigo? Not only did she play, she danced before the game and she was practically perfect in every way. Then she left, she was away for about five minutes, went back to the dressing room, came back, and this is when South Carolina went on a big run that seemed to clinch the game. Brings the enthusiasm. And now she is back in after Tennessee made a little bit of a run. Ron Staley trying to settle her team a bit. And the officials, Lisa Mattingly, over at the monitor to see who the last foul was on. So Westbrook, give her credit for that field goal. She'll have a chance at a three-point play once they assess the foul. So the, uh, the foul was not on the shooter, so they will inbound it. Jamie Nard getting ready to inbound it with a 10-point lead. Asia Wilson is back out there. We saw Bianca Jackson start to walk back out. Not sure if they can make the sub for Asia. And Dawn Staley literally put both hands on Jackson and said, no, you're not going in. It's Asia. Yeah, so <laughs> Carla Fountain came over and said the foul was before the shot. So Tennessee's taking the ball out of bounds. Nard just off the back iron. Jennings with the battle. The ball hits her in the head. And Tennessee faithful. A little grumpy that no foul was called. Pass, Rosette finds Jennings, who's wide open. Nard for three. Davis with the rebound. And Renaya Davis, last night's hero with the three that won the game against Auburn. Has just two points tonight. Has been in foul trouble um, early on. And that happens sometimes. You're so emotional. You play a great game, hit the big shot, and you just really can't calm down and get some good sleep. And you expect the magic to just continue. And, and tonight it's, it's been more of a nightmare for Bernia Davis. Wilson going for the steal. Davis hits it. That's her second field goal tonight. Single digit game inside three minutes. South Carolina is in the bonus. Both teams are actually in the bonus. Harris escaped the double team. Bounce pass inside. Jennings fouled. And Renaya Davis has just fouled out. And still the Partisan Tennessee crowd, many of them giving her a standing ovation. Well, they missed her out on the floor. She has such a great presence about her. Just, just a freshman. freshman. Yeah, just a freshman, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in stereo. I mean, she's got three more years. Has a terrific work ethic. So could turn into one of the special players, and Tennessee's had a lot of them. But a night to forget for her. Hayes, gosh, she's fast. Russell gets inside of Wilson and scores. And this is where Asia Wilson, she can bring the ball down the floor at 6-5 and Grissette. Yeah, she, she makes me nervous. Yeah, you know, she's got the, the ball, ball so, right? Yeah, Ty Harris needs to go get the ball. <laughs> 
Jennings to Cruzette. Post to post passing's been really sharp for them tonight. Amy Jackson left it short. Harris gets grabbed. Minute 46 left to go in the game. Harris trying to close this game out. Yeah, Gail, if you watch the eyes and the body language of the South Carolina players when they're trying to beat the Tennessee press, when they get the ball into Ty Harris's hands, there is this sigh of relief <laughs> that finally there's a calming nature about the point guard and what she brings to this team, just a steadiness to her. Well, Steffi, that's so true. I think we we hear the sigh of relief from all the fans in the stands as well when Ty Harris has the ball in her hands. She just does such a good job taking care of the ball and running the team. And I would imagine a sigh of relief from Dawn Staley as well, who was one of the best point guards ever. And in gold medals for the U.S., great player at the University of Virginia. Russell cleans up. Timeout taken, but it's a 10-point advantage with 1.31 to go. So Asia Wilson out of the game yet again. She was able to play in this game, didn't start, but 24 points in 22 minutes. Two losses to Tennessee without Asia. Looks like they're going to get a win with her. She just makes such a big difference. Well, she does, and I love how effective, how efficient she is. But again, it's not just what she does on the court. It's what she does on the sidelines and everywhere. She makes her team much more comfortable, much more confident. A steadying influence, and there you go, the plus minus. Plus 23 when she's on the floor, and minus 13 when she was not out there. She has been absolutely spectacular. 24 points in 19 minutes, 12 rebounds, four blocks. And South Carolina, a minute 31 away from getting back to the final, or the semifinal tomorrow. They are the three-time defending champions of this tournament. And here's a turnover, Nard with a good look. Hayes gets it into Russell. Big rebound by Jennings. Grisette brings it up and throws it away. And that's where Ty Harris, I blame Grisette, but I blame Ty Harris. You've got to go get the ball. Demand the ball, just like you, we want our post players to demand the ball down low on the block. Well, your point guards up top during the press have to go demand the ball as well. Season high, 26 turnovers for South Carolina. We're under a minute. Tennessee, 26 points on 26 turnovers. A timeout taken by Grisette. Carolina had a season high in turnovers last Sunday in Knoxville, but they also didn't have Asia Wilson. Now 27 turnovers. Yeah, and if, if Tennessee could have made some like, some of those layups, yeah. they would have won this game. Um, just really remarkable. And Dawn, talk, Dawn Staley talked after their last game. She said, we have got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. And she really thought they would do a better job, and they, they have not. Tennessee also has 13 more offensive rebounds in South Carolina, which you think would translate into more second-chance points. They're only plus five in second-chance points. But it's the Asia Wilson factor and also Alexis Jennings and Herbert Harrigan, the big three players, big as in stature three, have come up big as they have combined for 48 points. Points in the paint, clearly in favor of South Carolina, plus 10. Tennessee still has one timeout left. Jackson, excuse me, Kleine doing a lot of dribbling before she is grabbed with 46.4 to go by Hayes. Hayes has been a bright spot tonight for Tennessee. Well, she has, and she's just, she's got such a great motor. 
and she's been she's had the attack mindset she has no fear and she's going to learn and grow as far as understanding when to take it in and when the trees are in there and she needs to pull it back out or find her teammate. I thought she's she's really done a much better job these last few minutes finding Mercedes Russell when she has penetrated. Pliny back at the line. And she's just one of four, but left untouched. Williams got the rebound. Now foul out on the perimeter with 38 seconds to go. When you saw Mimi Jackson, she was completely denying Ty Harris the ball. They want anyone else on that South Carolina team to handle the ball besides Ty Harris. Smart move. So now Grisette's turn to go to the free throw line. Just a 54% free throw shooter. And now Victoria Patrick comes in for the first time. Bianca Cuevas Moore, the, the senior next year. And that's somebody when you talk about the ability to bring the ball up the court. Cuevas Moore, someone who could do that. Lindsey Spann, who was the graduate transfer from Penn State, who was able to play in 15 games and then had her career end with a knee injury. And, and those are two losses that they could very well feel more sharply as they get deeper into March. Well, especially as they move forward, you, you see, you saw tonight the guards, they just couldn't hit. Lindsey Spann was their best three-point shooter. So they're going to have to find some scoring from some other spaces besides just their post players. Guard play is so important, period, but especially in the NCAA tournament, there's a South Carolina timeout, but you might not need a lot of guard help with you games like this every night. Yeah, those three were just remarkable this evening. And moving forward, the guards are going to have to hit some shots because they're going to teams are going to sag in on those three and dare the South Carolina guards to shoot. But tonight they were unstoppable. And it helps when one of the three is Asia Wilson, to be sure. Joking around there with Tyler as he shakes her head or whatever Asia's saying. And a great game for Alexis Jennings, who was not at her best last Sunday at Knoxville. So an encouraging sign as they move forward, they will play the winner of our nightcap between Missouri and Georgia. They won at Georgia on February 15th at South Carolina, but basketball fans might know that South Carolina and Missouri split two games during the regular season with some uh, extra stuff going on. Well, South Carolina wins its 24th game of the year, 73 to 62. So they head on to the semifinals. Asia Wilson, 24 points in just 19 minutes. Off the bench. Three of the four slots in the semifinal have been filled. Either Georgia or Missouri will play South Carolina tomorrow night. Mississippi State and A&M already preparing to meet at 5 Eastern time for local on ESPNU. Yeah, just an exciting time. Everybody wants to move forward in this tournament, stick around and win this championship. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And Tennessee only led for 30 seconds in this game. Asia Wilson came off the bench and was in and out of the lineup all night as going first at two minutes spurts and then that got elongated. And the South Carolina comes away with a 73-62 win. The only big blip for them is that they turned the ball over a season high 27 times. And that led to 26 Tennessee points. Don Stanley standing by with Steffi Sorensen. Well, Coach, this team has been through so much adversity, injuries. What did this win against Tennessee reveal about them? And we've been through a lot of turnovers, too, so we got to <laughs> add that to it. You know, it's just great. Our, our kids are resilient. We don't harp on, you know, the injuries that we that, that's happened to us this year. We just play the hand that's dealt to us. And fortunately for us, we got to win tonight. How big was your front court, I mean, showing up today? Huge, huge. They're, they're you know, they've been you know, carrying us all season long. And we got to continue to go to them because they're very, very efficient. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Steph. Maria Taylor.
Thank you so much, Steffi. So South Carolina, they get the win in the quarterfinals against Tennessee. They lost twice during the regular season. Doesn't matter at all because they'll be the ones advancing to the semifinal matchup. It'll be the fifth straight semifinal appearance for South Carolina. An impressive win over Tennessee. Again, after falling to them in the regular season finale without their three-time SEC Player of the Year, Asia Wilson. Well, it makes a big difference to have Asia Wilson on the floor <laughs> if you're South Carolina. Obviously, for many reasons, she takes up a lot of defenders. A lot of attention is drawn to her. But I really liked South Carolina's three-post lineup tonight with Wilson, Jennings, and Herbert Harrigan, sometimes Grissette. So I thought they were effective, passed well to each other, and really dominated the boards against Tennessee. And it, and it was clear what South Carolina wanted to do. You know, sometimes it's unclear what some of the teams that we're watching are trying to do. South Carolina's taking it inside. Yeah. Dawn will tell you before the game, if you give her the mic, she'll announce it to everybody. We're going <laughs> to pound it in there. And yeah. that's exactly what they did, and it paid dividends for them this evening. Yeah, we talked about the front court of South Carolina. They were certainly unstoppable. Asia Wilson and Alexis Jennings, they combined to be 14 for 21. They shot 66% from the field, and they're slowly but surely making their way on up to the stage now because we want to talk to them about what they saw on the court, but they were never, ever slowed down by Tennessee. Yeah, you, you're taking shortcuts with your math, Maria. <laughs> let me let me give you the sure, long math. Ahead. Give me the long. They, they scored 46 points, those three post players. Uh -huh. They scored 12 more from the free throw line. They scored 58. 58 of South Carolina's <laughs> yeah. points, those three post players. Yeah, and, and John mentioned it going into halftime. It's all about paint points for us tonight, uh -huh. and they definitely delivered in the paint. And yep. there they are. They've been delivered to us yes. on set. You guys are live on TV. Just hey, know that cool. now okay. as you get mic'd up in the process. Live. Uh, Ada, I want to start with you because this is the first time you've been able to play against Tennessee. What was it like to finally get on the court against man, the Lady Vols? Man, it was great. It was great to be out there with my team. Like you said, this is my first time this season ever playing Tennessee and they're such a great team so just to be out there with my team and just see the energy and the flow of the game come to us it was a lot of fun to get out there with them well yes. I've got to go I'm going to Alexis Jennings right here because Alexis to me you played like you were shot out of a cannon when the game started and I personally have not seen that kind of energy and passion come out of you you were dominating on the boards you were aggressive offensively to the basket what was in you what, what was in you coming into that into this game I just knew I had to step up as a leader one of the years on the team you know Asia was out so I took that as a motivation you know she's our leader you know she's the one that gets us going but I felt like me and Ty and everyone else on the team did a great job of bringing everyone together and bringing our chemistry back and we got back to playing game called basketball tonight yeah Hey, you, you dominated inside. I mean, you, you, you guys scored, what did I say, 56? 46 pain points. 58 points. Count, here. Count, should have seen him over here. Counting <laughs> the free throws, like 58 <laughs> points with your three forwards. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. To know that Coach is sitting over there, I told him earlier, Coach, get on the mic and announce to the crowd, we're taking it inside. Mm -hmm. And then the, then the, the <laughs> onus is on you, yeah. Yeah. you know, to deliver because everybody knows what South Carolina wants to do with it. Right. How does that feel? Does that motivate you? Is it pressure? I mean, it's a mixture of both. I mean, that's our bread and butter. Everyone knows that our inside game is pretty good. So uh, it's kind of tough when you're going to have three bodies in there with you. But I think it's, it's all about mental toughness. And I think that's something that all of our post players have, especially Lex and I. We really try to get our freshmen mentally prepared for that. So, I mean, it's a great feeling. Yes, it is pressure at times. But I think we get the job done pretty well. You know, y'all are really big. you got three <laughs> post players going. This three big, this big lineup. Yeah. Don on the boards tonight in Tennessee the last two games beat y'all on the boards so y'all weren't gonna let that happen again huh? <laughs> oh no yeah no <laughs> nah, we couldn't let that happen <laughs> uh, talk to us about your success in this SEC tournament Asia because you've actually never lost in it yeah you are 10 and 0 in this setting That's yeah so uh, I mean you, can you believe that right <laughs> it doesn't happen that often so what is it about the tournament that you think allows your South Carolina squad to always come together and come out the tour um, I mean we get we get a great game from every single team throughout the season but I think around tournament time it's just the feel of it. It's just March Madness is getting in into all of us. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I think we just play with a lot of energy. We play with more energy tournament time because we know it's something on the line. We're trying to get that right there. Right. So, yeah, okay. uh, it's a lot on the line. So, that really makes you play harder. So, I mean, okay. I have a lot of fun. And hopefully I can help my teammates out the best way that I can. You guys going to stay for the next game? Yeah. Yeah. Who are you pulling for? 
You know, an FCC <laughs> team. Any team at this you know, point. <laughs> what do you remember from playing each team? How about that? Georgia uh, and Missouri. It was tough. It was a tough game, very physical. That's I think that was both games for us, but Hey, we're just going to stick within our system and do us. Hey, I, I want to ask y'all's opinion of this. Tennessee missed a lot of layups tonight. Mm -hmm. They missed a lot of wide open layups. What's your opinion of why that happened? Do they think they heard your footsteps or what? <laughs> um, I don't know, honestly. I have no idea to answer that question. Well, I mean, y'all are big. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. maybe they thought you were coming behind the block <laughs> or whatever, but that's a lot of missed layups yeah. by them. Yeah. On I the think flip we side just, of that, AJ, every yeah. time I go ahead, Alexis. Well, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I think we just did the best we could. You know, uh, when they got their steals and things like that, we just ran back and just tried to get between them and the basket. And I think that was just enough to pull us through with the win tonight. Yeah. What I was going to say is every time that you guys have a layup, it seems as though you cash in. I'm serious. Every yeah. time you get an offensive board, I'm like, okay, well, that's two points for South Carolina. All y'all can go running the other way because <laughs> right. it's about to go in. I mean, what makes it so easy for you when you're that close in range to get the layup in, no matter if you're in traffic, if you're by yourself? Yeah. it doesn't matter um i don't know i think that's pretty much i'm in the paint so i know that's probably the easiest basket that i'm going to get on the court no matter who's in front of me so the best thing is just put it up on the glass and just see if i can get a touch or something and just it's all about the touch all about the touch smooth touch <laughs> you know we talk, we, we've talked about the points how well you shot it how well you shot it from the free throw line you go to the defensive end. You guys had 10 blocks tonight. Ooh, I didn't even know that. I yes. didn't know that. Oh, no. That's crazy. That's why you come up here to learn stuff. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> What worked for you on that side of the ball? Um, just talking. Uh, we normally tell our guards, you know, don't waste the foul. Just send them to us. I mean, we might get the foul, but at the same time, it's more likely for us to get a block shot or something just to disrupt their shot. So we really just, I, I'm glad that our guards kind of trust us in that way. So I'm going to go. Asia, we saw you doing a little dancing with the stars a little bit earlier. I don't know if you saw, but we ran an entire feature of you learning how to dance. You had a beautiful red dress. You oh. did lose to Frank Martin's <laughs> wife, but that's all right. Uh, what was that process like? Did it help you at all? You better in the paint now that you know how to dance with yeah, the stars? Yeah, I got my footwork right a little bit. I was kind of mad that I lost. That's it right. Did you that's get, right. Did you get to keep Lexus. the dress? Because that dress was nice. <laughs> Those that's dance moves. Uh, Lexus, yeah, break it down, Alexis. That footwork is there's right. A, look, there's some do dance moves. moves. You can do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the dress, at, the dress. Look at Alexis. Yeah. Oh. But look at Alexis. Alexis, Alexis is going like this. <laughs> the dress oh, still going. The dress <laughs> <laughs> right. She has other strengths. <laughs> Definitely. Maybe not the best of dance moves, but I will say that when she's in the circle, she rocks it out. She can yak them on everybody. Well, okay, We're so. not going to be able to get any players up here anymore if we keep telling the truth. <laughs> Congratulations on your win, Alexis and Asia. Thank you. Asia Wilson, she's 10-0 in the SEC tournament. That's because South Carolina, they advance again.